everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for simonsystamp.com. Today I'm using the February 2018 card kit, and this kit is packed with a ton of supplies, like even more than usual, I think. And I'm going to be using just a few of them on today's card. So I started out by using some watercolor paper. Now this is one of the items I use today that is not included in the kit, but you could definitely use whatever watercolor paper you have on hand. I'm not doing a ton of water on this, so the type of watercolor paper you use isn't as important on this particular project. So the kit comes with a dot card of six different Daniel Smith watercolors. So in order to just give myself an idea of what these colors look like, because they do look quite different when they're dried as a dot on the page, I'm watering them down and spreading the color out a little bit. This is gonna give me an idea of what the colors look like before I start putting them onto my project. So I'm using a watercolor brush or a water brush that is included in the kit. I'm so glad they thought to include this because it makes painting from the dot card of watercolors so super simple and easy. So I do want to have quite a bit of water when I pick up the color. So I'm squeezing that water brush to make sure I have quite a bit of moisture and then I'm moving it over onto my watercolor paper. So this watercolor paper is some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. I taped it down to a hardboard so that as this watercolor background dries, it's going to dry flat. If you have problems with your watercolor paper warping and getting buckles in it and just looking really strange, try taping it down to a hard surface, whether that's a board like I'm using, or it could just be your table or countertop or desk that you're working on. It's a great way to make sure that it stays flat. I like to use a hardboard like this because it protects my cutting mat underneath when I use my heat tool to speed up the drying process. If I was to have this taped down to my cutting mat and then apply the heat on top, I could possibly run the risk of warping my cutting mat instead because the heat would cause that cutting mat to buckle. I'm now going to take the stamp set which is called Crafty Friends and this is actually a stamp set that I designed for the kit and it's absolutely perfect for all of us card makers out there who also have card making friends whether we've met them uh, locally or if they're our friends online. I don't know about you guys but I have a lot of crafty and card making and stamping friends in the world and not as many locally. So I like to actually send my cards out to those crafty friends. So this is one of those awesome card designs and also stamp sets that goes with it um, to send to some of those friends. So I'm gonna be doing some heat embossing. So I prepped my watercolor background with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm using some Versamark ink and stamping this little envelope image over and over and over on this background. I'm going to be eventually cutting all of these envelopes out and I want to make sure I have a wide variety of color over all of the different envelopes. And that's why I decided to go ahead and watercolor the background before stamping the envelopes. You could also go about it the other way around where you stamp the envelopes and then watercolor over the top. It's just a little bit of a different look. When you emboss first and then watercolor over the top, because the embossing has a little bit of a raised edge, you will get some color kind of pulling in the edges of each of the images. If you want more of a flat color across the entire envelope uh, image, you'll want to watercolor first and then do your stamping and embossing. You'll also notice that I'm stamping a few, adding embossing powder on, heat setting that, and then moving on. And that's because I wanted to make sure I didn't have any envelopes overlapping. I'm now using these twiggy curved blade scissors and I'm gonna use these to cut out these envelopes. This is the set of scissors that are included in the kit and I thought I'd give them a try. These are great scissors for travel because they're so compact. So if you really uh, wanna save space when you're packing for a crafting retreat or even just packing up some crafting items to take with you on the road, this is a great option. And it's actually a really great bonus item in the card kit because you don't normally get tools like this in the card kit. So this is one, one kit that has a ton of value. 
So I'm cutting out each one of those envelopes and I'll set them aside. And now I'm taking the white cardstock that's included in the kit. This is some Simon Says Stamp 120 pound heavy base or heavyweight cardstock. So I cut it in half. One will be the actual card base. And then this other piece is going to be what I work with for my, with my stamping. It's cut to four and one eighth wide by five and one, no, I, no, I'm sorry. It's four inches wide by five and one quarter tall. And I've positioned two stamps from the stamp set into my Misty stamp positioning tool. And I'm using some Versafine Onyx Black ink. I'm going to stamp this down. I'm gonna use my fingers and walk it across all of those images to make sure I get a good impression. And I'm gonna lift this up and you're gonna see there's a little spot on that striped border that didn't stamp. But because I use those magnets to hold down my project, I'm able to just swing that door over press that area down and it gives me a complete stamped image. I'm now taking that card base that I cut earlier and I'm scoring it at five and a half using a score buddy from ScorePal. I'm using a Teflon bone folder for that because I just find that it scores things a little bit better and doesn't leave any uh, shiny cast behind. It's a great tool. I really highly recommend that Teflon bone folder. So I've creased my card base really well and now I'm going to position my stamped piece and start putting things together. I had a little smudge um, with the black ink, so I used a Tombow Mono Sand Eraser just to clean up that area, and it cleaned it up really well. And then I taped down my stamped piece to my cutting mat here, and that's just to hold it in place while I move all these envelope pieces around and position them in the exact spot where I want to have them. And to help myself and kind of give myself a guide for as I adhere these, I use a T-square ruler. I just put that up and put it right along that edge where I want these envelopes to line up with. And then I put a little bit of foam adhesive on the back of the envelopes. I use this ruler as I adhered all three columns of envelopes on the front of this cardstock. And you're gonna see me move the, the ruler to the other side and complete that row. And I just move that along and try to uh, eyeball it and get those on there as straight as possible. I added some additional foam adhesive on the back and then press that down onto the card base. So that is the card design for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. This card kit is available over at simonsystamp.com and the stamp set is available by itself as well. But this kit is so jam packed with value. I think you'll probably want to get the entire kit. Thanks so much for watching today. Um, links for all the supplies used today are down below in the video description and at the blog. And thanks for watching.